Brazil, the land of soccer, carnival, samba, bossa nova, and more recently, the land of environmental disasters. If you have been watching the news in the past few years, you probably heard of two major collapses of tailings dams in southeastern Brazil. The first one took place in the city of Mariana on November 5, 2015. It killed 19 people and devastated an entire watershed. The latest collapse occurred just a few days ago in the nearby city of Brumadinho. This time, however, the failure was way more tragic. About 100 deaths have been confirmed and hundreds are still missing. Brazilians are in shock. How is this possible? Why haven't we learned from the previous disaster? Many people are now trying to explain this tragedy, which has many implications not only to Brazilians, but to governments and mining stakeholders worldwide. However, as I argue in this video, the causes of and remedies to disasters like this are very complicated. Humans love correlations, but just a fraction of them cares about causation. This most recent tailings dam collapse occurred in a politically divided Brazil. The country has seen its former left-wing president sent to jail and more recently saw the election of Jair Bolsonaro, a far-right populist figure known as the Brazilian Trump. Bolsonaro has promised to privatize many state-owned companies and he has also been openly criticizing environmental laws and environmental institutions. Many Brazilians are using this political context to explain the failure. People on the left are now framing the disaster as a signal of what is yet to come with Bolsonaro. People on the right are blaming the former left-wing government for being incompetent and ineffective in managing risks. Moreover, many people are blaming privatization and liberal policies for environmental disasters. As Valley, the company who is involved in the two dam collapses, is a controversial case of privatization in Brazil. The fact, however, is that disasters like this are often a result of a combination of factors of different natures that occur in different points in time. Although easy explanations are rhetorically strong, they rarely get close to reality. Three years after the first dam failure in Mariana, people are still debating its engineering and political causes. The same sense of mystery is very likely to bloom in the most recent case of Brumadinho. Investigations have, of course, just begun. But given that the dam has a several decade old history of engineering, inspections, licensing and management, we will probably end up with inconclusive explanations. But the company, regardless of the investigations, have already come up with a narrative. They are blaming the geoengineering technology used in the two tailings dams. The company has just announced that will be decommissioning all of its upstream dams. According to the company, the upstream method of raising dams is very likely the cause of the two collapses. The company might be correct, but in any case, we have to remember that such risky technologies have long been accepted by a system of regulations, institutions, auditors, communities, and engineering practice. This very same system, if left unchanged, is likely to accept other risky technologies in the future. So, if we are seriously interested in preventing disasters, we have to take a broader look into what is going on in the system. One very important thing to consider is that the failure occurred in a company that is a leader in corporate social responsibility, a company that has ISO 14001 environmental management systems, that is signatory of human rights, codes of conduct, a company that has been publishing sustainability reports and promotes all sorts of voluntary and philanthropic programs. A few years ago, Vali was proudly telling everyone that it was ranked one of the world's most sustainable companies. And now, ironically, people are asking whether this company should actually exist. It takes a lot of money and effort to convince stakeholders that you deserve a license to operate, that you care about human rights and the environment. 
but it takes literally just a few minutes to completely destroy your reputation. BP and other large corporations who have been through similar disasters know quite well what this means. The two disasters also expose many flaws that exist in current environmental licensing and impact assessment policies. The mining operations in Mariana and Brumadinho had environmental licenses and had gone through environmental impact studies that were supposed to prevent catastrophes like this. But in Brazil, we know for sure that environmental agencies are underfunded. They lack the capacity to manage the licensing processes and follow up on the many licenses conditions. And in the Brazilian state of Minas Gerais, the environmental agencies can grant licenses without any meaningful analysis of the risks of a dam failure, which is responsibility of the federal mining agency. This siloed approach where the environmental agency checks biophysical and social issues and the mining agency checks them safety leads to a very short-sighted understanding of risks. This is plain wrong and must change. We have also to question engineers and auditors. Dozens of engineers and auditors have evaluated those two dams. Again, the investigations have just begun. But the companies arguing that they were fully complying with regulations and that the inspections reports were telling that the dam was safe. If the company is indeed correct, then we either have a case of sheer incompetence or of limited technical knowledge on the issue. A knowledge gap is part of Folly's current narrative. The company believes that the state-of-the-art of upstream dams are not fully capable to capture the risks of failures. If that's the case, then engineers' and auditors' mistakes are just an indirect consequence of the books they read. But to many, many people, the dam failure is probably the result of negligence of company and regulators. In Brazil, like in many countries, governments tend to welcome mining enterprises because despite their environmental side effects, they bring jobs, revenues, and infrastructure. This is particularly strong in current day Brazil, which is going through a huge financial crisis. State and local governments are working under severe budget deficits. They cannot even cover payroll. The mayors of both Mariana and Brumadinho have already stated that without Valley, their local economies, like the tailings dams, will collapse. Such a context has psychological effects in politicians and decision makers. Their perception of what is right or wrong, acceptable or unacceptable, becomes malleable, opening room for negligence. But as I said early in this video, Brazilians are in shock, and we are now starting to see radical pressures for changes in the status quo. However, there is still no consensus over desirable directions. People want to change the status quo to whatever direction their ideologies suggest. Easy fixes and silver bullets are spreading all over the news. These are sad signs that our political crisis is not over and that Brazilians still lack the discipline and patience to address complicated problems.